You're correct. Right, you know this. Our brethren get, get involved in such doubtful disputations, things that, not, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I told you about somebody, and I, I think they were just kind of coming up with something. People, in ministry, people try to nitpick on stuff. Right. I'm going to tell you all about another one that somebody did. Quite, they try to find reasons to, they, they, they right. search oh. and search and find fault. Then it, it justifies them. Like an nagging life. Yeah, <laughs> so, so that's what happened. Because Cornelius is a doubtful disputation. Because it's not, in, it's not even in Paul's epistles, okay? Uh -huh. It's not even a big deal. If somebody want to believe it, what do I care? I mean, it's not going to... When we get there, the Lord's going to say, well, you know, you thought Cornelius was in the little flock. Too bad for you. Like, yeah, but some people don't understand that nitpicking uh, yeah, policy, yeah. though, where it's like, yeah. if it's a core doctrine... If it's a core it's doctrine, not that's... No. <laughs> it's not no, no, no. Let, yeah, let's get that, because just like the law, there were weightier and lesser issues. Okay, let me give you an example. When the, when the Pharisees would be all on people about washing their hands or uh, their tithe, when the tithing, the little bit of their spices, you know what the Lord says? You fools, you worry about that little stuff and washing of hands and you leave off the weightier things, which is judgment, mercy, and all those. There are weightier and lesser things even in Paul's epistles. Uh -huh. This right here is the weightiest issue. The heirs versus judgment. Yes. Judgment seat of Christ. There's no nitpick in this. You've got to get this thing right. This needs to be preached. That was actually what I was going to ask you about. How do you determine um, a doubtful disputation versus a pinnacle doctrine that's not a doubtful disputation? By the weight of the evidence of, of, of Pauline truth. For example, almost every passage alludes to running the race, Pressing towards the mark. Look at Paul's own life. I press toward the mark. Like he's 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 pushing this issue of the, the the way you live today in the mystery in the truth affects your eternity. I'll give you one that's a doubtful disputation from Paul. The issue of the Lord's Supper. Every almost everybody that I know looks at it the way that Catholics look at it yeah, as this way for wine. Wasn't even it. It was a meal. Second of all, he only mentions it once in the book of First. Oh well, he, probably, he mentions two separate elements of it, but he mentions the table. He didn't even go into detail with them on how to do it. He just told them the spirit. And he never, so if somebody wanted to he never battle it. over he that, that would be a lesser or more doubtful disputation because Paul doesn't give much light. Here, let me give you guys one that came up. This this one will blow you away. I, this is not. This is real. I've experienced all this in ministry. Check this out. So amongst the joint heirs, there's thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, mights. Like in the kingdom. And then down here, the heirs. Different levels. The heirs. It's every name that is named. Okay. In which okay. is not a governmental position. Right. Only the joint heirs have rule, reign and rule. Okay? Not, not reign, rule, government. Okay? But in Israel, if you're a, if you're a Jew getting into that kingdom, you, you, you're, you're part of he, he, you Literally, he uses Israel to rule and reign over the Gentiles. Here, let me tell you one of the biggest... I mentioned the Lord's Supper there, but let me tell you that one of the biggest things that happened to me. Somebody <coughs> said they were trying to find a lot to, to cause I didn't it was a it was a Jezebel. Mar uh Natha. Pardon. Maranatha. She told me Lord. that God had delivered her from seven other pastors. That's when she liked me. Delivered her from seven pastors? And delivered her, in other words. She she, she wants to be a teacher, and she she she's, she's very special in her own mind. So she contacted these pastors, and for a while she's all right till they teach her something that she didn't. Should they tell her something that she disagree with? There, so she go from pastor to pastor to pastor to pastor. Right. Now she gave up on me. She says, "Well, God delivered you from me, me her from me." Then she went to Brother Jordan, which I laugh because I go, "You like to talk, and he ain't got time to talk to you." Well, now I find out, because he uses this word, and because I use it, uh, she's down with him. No, and she's this, going, is this, this 
silly women yeah. ever learning, never coming I don't, to That's what she said. like the word. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what the problem is, but now she's with a, a brother who follows Keith Blades, and she's all into that. Anyway, my point is, this word Maranatha, it's mentioned once in Scripture, okay? One time, okay? That right there tells you, and it's in Paul, mm -hmm. it's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, okay? If any man love not our Lord Jesus Christ, let him be a Maranatha. 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 It literally means our Lord cometh. But because this woman is always focused on the occult and, 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 and stuff, and I actually told her that months back when she got mad at me, I said, you're too focused on the occult, and you're not focused enough on the scriptures. And then the scriptures she wants me to she's all the Old Testament stuff. The chick is crazy. So the occult uses this word. By the way, let me tell you what else. You go to, uh, and I've done it, you go to Satan, Satan worshipers, they use all type of terminology from the Bible. They call him the God of this world. Paul Big calls him. Paul yeah. calls. They call him Big J. Big G, yeah. Paul calls him Little G. That's who they call Satan, their master. They're talking about ascended masters and all. What, what I was trying to tell her, but she didn't want to hear it. When, when you look at the occult, a new ageism and stuff, the terminology they use, and they're getting from these fallen angels and these devils, is terminology that... The scriptures use, they counterfeit and hijack these things. The God of this world is a term Paul used for Satan. Yeah. Now watch, here's what she would do. She would hear me use God of this world and say, see, Ron must be part of the occult. <laughs> no, I got that from Paul in 2 Corinthians 4. The occult stole it from the Bible. Well, she mentions this word Maranatha. She says, well, see, the cults use that. Uh, but I got it from Paul. Yeah. And it means our Lord cometh. It's in the context of let him be anathema, accursed. If any man loves not our Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. And then Paul is saying, come on and ju come on, judge and get him. Yeah, the, the cult probably used the word the also. Like, who cares? It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a context that that's matters. It's the most ridiculous thing. But I had, she mad because I used, and then she said. So her argument is because he, the occult use a word that's in the Bible, and you also use a word that's in the Bible that somehow you have some. She problem. said a true grace pastor would never end a, in uh, in in his study with Maranatha. Now, by the way, every every letter that Brother Jordan writes to to Brother, whether it's Grace School Bible, when he he says Maranatha, okay, it's a Bible word. Huh? It is. It is a Bible word. But wait a minute, watch this. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Maranatha. And I didn't even end my study. It's one that uh, I would give Jan and Cindy uh, some of my studies, and then they would just, she would write it out or text it out, and that's how she, which is fine. But, but like, just forget all that. It's a, this woman was just trying to find, she, I'm going to tell you how much she nitpicked me. That's the only thing she could find to get out. But really, she doesn't like me because I, I told her after about a year of just her phone calls blabbering, and not listening and focus on the cult. I said, you need to stop focusing on the cult. You need to start reading Paul. And she didn't like that. So now I'm the eighth pastor that God delivered her from. <laughs> now Brother Jordan's the ninth pastor because he used that and so she, she don't want him either. But she's going to do the numbers of the And when she gets tired, yeah. when this other guy ain't going to do what she wants, she's going to be the ten. So if, if God's delivering you from nine pastors as a female, maybe you're the problem. I don't even know if that's a doubtful disputation. That's just, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, that's what I'm saying. She just, I, well, I, I, it, it, yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Right, her point doesn't even make sense. But I'm just like, this is the type of stuff, and the reason I brought this up, because here's something that's only used one time. Right. It's not like you can even... Well, her, but your point is that her to use that to say, to somehow call fault on you is erroneous, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Well, first of all, because she, her whole premise is, See, the occult uses that, and you do have people, I deal with people who think, just because an occult, the occult or New Ageism uses a term or a concept that, for, for example, Mormonism talks about you being the god of your own planet and stuff. Well, you can't just dismiss, what do you think the heavenly place is for? Look at what the Lord, like joint heirs, we're actually going to be out there. Right. Even Jordan kind of mentioned that at the conference, I know. right? You gotta, the problem is we have to preface that because Satan has used Mormonism to to uh, hinder an actual truth. Right. Well, and that's this. 
she that my point is she goes that far out of magnify to find any little thing, and that's what she found. One time in the Bible, one verse, and she doesn't even have it right. We do have it right, but she goes, Oh, no grace pastor. God delivered me from it because no grace pastor would ever use that to sign off his son. That's so weird. I don't That's stupid. That's it is. That's she doesn't say nothing about rightly dividing the word, huh? That's well no, all, she's all, all into Proverbs and that's Isaiah. Only mentioned once too. <laughs> Well, exactly, and the, but the con like well, just like mystery, the concept is all through through the story. Well, I'm, I'm kind of like more interested in like what, how can you equip yourself to know if something is a doubtful disputation? And what, well, the biggest the, well, and the reason I brought this up because it's mentioned one time. Hmm. The biggest thing I can see is because for like example, the, the focus the, of Paul's epistles, like hmm. what's the way of of him? How do I want to say it? Like the is it something that he's constantly giving weight to in his epistles? Well, plus it's things that the mystery hinges upon. For example, the deity of Christ, the humanity of Christ. Some of these things point. are yeah. non-negotiable, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and even with them, even how you said it, the concept about the deity of Christ, that's just a given that's just a given in Paul's epistles. Right. It's just an assumption. Right. I mean, he, he does have some verses, but the entire concept, Paul reveals Jesus Christ as God. Mm -hmm. So that's something, yeah, that's not a doubtful disputation. That is, that's some, that, that is one of the, that is one of the pinnacle doctrines, you, the deity of Christ. You yeah. know, you know, uh, denominational Christianity or whatever, they, they see pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib as a doubtful disputation, right? But I would, but not, I would not. It's a very pinnacle doctrine yeah. in Paul's epistles. And, and the reason I say that is because you can't go, you, you, Paul mentions it over and over and over again, delivered from the wrath to come. It is a, I like how you said that, you, you good words that way. It is, it is a doctrine, whereas the mystery hinges on this. Like, if you let this slip, you mess up the mystery. Right. Yeah. And that's the deity of Christ. Um, humanity of Christ. The humanity of Christ. No. You get people who fight you on that. Uh yeah, you get people to fight you on that. A hypostatic union, right? Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, Terry McLean is, is, is mad at, at Brother Jordan to this day because Brother Jordan emphasized the humanity of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and then he overcorrects by de-emphasizing the humanity. He didn't de and you know what he does? He screws up the faith of Christ. Sure he does, because the faith of Jesus Christ was displayed in his humanity. Mm -hmm. Trust, and faith, the guys, and faith. And the guys yeah. that study under him screw it up, too. I know. It's, it's all, so, yeah, Ryan, I would say... Uh, that's a good way of putting it. I'll think about it, but I mean, just think of right off how you put it. And it takes some discernment. That, I mean, that's what Paul is dealing with. He, it takes some, well, look at look what he says. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubt the disputation. So, obviously, it would be some of the weightier issues where, where the mystery hinges on upon, right? Right, right. The, the mystery doesn't hinge on a meal. Right. What hinges was the spirit of that, uh, the, the saints of that meal, how you treat the body. Treat the body, if that's not negotiable. You can't yeah. defraud no, you can't the body. No, you can't, because he's the avenger of all stuff. Right, right. So that's a good example. But Paul, uh, exactly. But Paul never told them when to do it, how often. All he says is the right spirit. He, he says, so whenever, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup. He didn't even, he didn't even tell. He says, ah, the rest I'll put it, I'll fix when I get there. So I would say, Something like the Lord's Supper that religion makes a huge deal of, right? Because of Roman Catholicism. I was just talking to you about that this morning. I know. Well, what Paul would say is that's a doubtful disputation. And I would, I would know, I, I would say that... <laughs> well, I guess technically if Paul were here, he'd set everybody straight about it, right? Yeah, he did. Well, see, he would, he would do it. But I, I, that's what I'm saying. Because he didn't go into great detail of it. Right. Right? Another doubtful disputation is the issue of... Fasting, mm -hmm. or or diet, or, or diet. Yeah, but we, we can keep going. Yeah, yeah. Or diet that includes. Okay, exactly. Or or diet. marriage or single being single or being married. Right. A lot, uh, of, a lot of cults want to make sure you're married. You get married, right? That marriage, sing, I'm sure people look at you because you have longer hair as a man. Stuff like that. You, you're, you're, you're right, right. Because remember, we don't have such custom and so forth. Mm -hmm. In Paul's day, that was an issue with some. He would say, not even a big issue in the dispensation of grace. They're, like, if we if we thought about it, we can come up with all these things. That's good. Di diet is one. Mm -hmm. 
Some people are vegetarians or vegans. Some people eat all these different things. Those things aren't, for the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but love, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. So, yeah, so all those di different doubtful disputations, yeah. Because if I think hard enough, that's, that's a good one, because people would say, well, well, because they don't rightly divide, they would say, well, you're not allowed to eat pork or, you know. Right, so right, so, right. Paul's like, I am persuaded by the Lord that nothing is unclean in and of itself. So, anyway. So you got all these different uh, things. I guess we we could probably put a list together. No, no. I kind of feel like I get the feeling that plenty of times a lot of these guys that try and uh, use the dispute whole, dispute yeah. the joint air issue, they say, well, you know, you can see it that way. I'll see it this way. It's yeah, not but a big this deal. is not. Well, that is a big deal. And they're deal, acting though. like it's a doubtful disputation. Well, you just said it. Maybe uh, let, let's see if uh, if we can come up. I'm gonna let you guys go. All right, bro. We'll see you. All right, Jim. Uh, is it so okay, bro? Keep us posted on the chat. Thanks, man. I'll see you Wednesday. We'll see you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Is that something where the 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 mystery hinges upon, right? Look, if we didn't do this, if we didn't have this, or we didn't, how do I say it? If this thing was 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 not done, or or done, would it? affect the mystery of Christ. A meal. If you did a meal or not, would it affect the mystery of Christ? The answer is no. That, that was something that they did. That was a custom they did. He says, when you do it, have the right spirit. In fact, I think what Paul would do, Brian, is say, either do it in the right spirit or don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Because what it was to show was our oneness Unity. in Christ. Right. Yeah. Right. So communion, common union. Common union. Right. Uh, issues of what you know, like you said, meats or what you, your diet, um, hair, hair length. I, I guarantee you, there there are going to be people who look at your long hair as a man, right, and have a problem with it, just the same way there are legalists who have problem with women with short hair. Right, right. It, it, it is. I, I, I've I've seen, it, but usually see it in like Baptist denomination dress when women wear pants and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or headdress. I mean, yeah, just all these different things. Does the mystery hinge on these things? Yeah. Does the mystery hinge on the issue of joining? It's all about that. That's the glory that we're to obtain. That's well, what the mystery is about. Right. Sure. You got uh, the issue issue of our destiny, right? In the heavenlies. Yes. And what we're going to be doing there, that's a big part of the mystery. And if I you're going you, to say that that's not an issue, that's, that's I, I, I think you're onto something. Exactly. So if we break down, and I'm, I'm going to write these things down, you know, think of, maybe it's these things that are Pertinent to the mystery yeah, itself. The, 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 the unique gospel, mm -hmm. the dispensation, right? The apostle. The apostle, the uh, agency, mm -hmm. the hope, the the um, the destination, and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. Like all of those things. Right. The, Let me think. It, you got the bodies and the rapture and judgment yeah. seat of Christ all rolled up all in there, the resurrection. The, the right. resurrection, all right. that takes part together, the, uh -huh. the body. And then uh, you got uh, the doctrine. By the way, it's, the doctrine it, itself. By the way, it's it's, it's pre wrath, pre tribulation because it's delivered us from the wrath to come. That's Pauline, mm -hmm. yeah. And also the doctrine itself that can build you up to give you an error. Well, you got to have the one faith. The faith is yeah, faith exactly. The doctrine. Important. The doctrine is important. You get uh, the doctrine right. Um, Romans sixteen twenty five, Ephesians three four through five, Colossians one. By the way, we're going over all of those verses next week. Exactly. Corinthians two six through eight, Colossians uh -huh. four three through four. I got all of them on on here. Go so good. And we'll talk about this next week because yeah, all of those are pertinent. So yeah, I would say doubtful disputation was something that did not. You know what? This, you know what? I tell you that that whole thing about reading, uh, hijacking justification or sanctification and making a justification. That's an attack on the doctrine. It is. That's it not. Is. That's that's not a doubtful. Not a doubtful disputation. Yeah. The that's least doubtful stuff. disputation is the issue of joint heirship. It's all about that. Mm -hmm. And un right under that, the feel come right in under that issue is you have to be able to. In fact, the issue of joint heir does hinge on whether you separate the justification verses from the sanctification verses. Mm -hmm. It the issue of joint air hinges on making that distinction. Now why so is it, why are, is what is the motivation for so many people that when you point out, hey, you know what you're doing here, you're kinda you you're not just kinda you're trampling on a on a core doctrine here. And then they say no that's a doubtful disputation when it's clearly not. What do you think is their motivation of playing that angle? 
Well, first of all, pride, because it's something that they didn't already know. Mm -hmm. That they're not willing to receive the word with our readiness of mind and search the scripture today. Right, maybe words. laziness of not, not being willing to study it out too. Part, and, that, and, and quite frankly, that's part of unbelief. Mm -hmm. Because unbelief is, listen, if we're, if we're to have faith in God's word, he wants us to study this stuff out. So, especially if someone says, hey, this is a core essential doctrine of the Apostle Paul. Like if somebody comes to me and says, hey, Brother Ron, I would like to share with you a core essential doctrine of the Apostle Paul. I'll be all ears. Right. Because I'm interested to see what this brother got to say. Right. This is not a doubtful disputation. We need to talk about it. Right. And if it's something that, now it's going to sound weird, but if it's something that, uh, that I'm new to, I, I would, I, first of all, I'd hear and I'd say, wow, interesting. Where are the verses? Hmm. Let's look at the verses. I'm not going to just dismiss it. Well, I never heard that. I know everything. I'd be like, you about to share something from Paul that I haven't seen. Fine, I want to see it, but you got to show me from verses. We got to look at it. Right. See, but that's how I would respond. I'd say, man, I, my first thing would be like, oh, really? L let's check it out. Because I know if it's an essential doctrine of Paul, we're going to get in Paul's epistles. And I study them out every day. So if something slipped by me, man, I want to know it. That's my attitude. I want to know it. Right. I won't say, well, you know, I don't know this. No. See, and see, I can't even think like some brother. I would say, if somebody, if a brother of the Lord, who, uh, a dispensation say, hey, man, can I share something with you? What I believe is a core, essential, or major theme in Paul's epistles, I will say, yes. Let's show me the verses. Let's get it. I'd say, let's sit down together. Let's look at it. Because I don't want to miss anything. Mm -hmm. Now, what will probably happen, I say, oh, yeah, man, I see that, too, and maybe give me more light. Or I say, well, I don't see that. Let's, okay. And, and again, that's why I went originally, I said, it's the weight of the verses, right? Right. If a guy came to me about fasting, he says, hey, man, let me show you something about the Apostle Paul, core doctrine. Let, let's say he assumes, and he says, right here in 1 Corinthians 7, see, this issue of prayer and fasting, man, that's it. I say interesting, interesting, because I, I can tell context and stuff. I say now, well, I already know. I don't even have to ask the question. I, what other passage does the Apostle Paul mention fasting? Well, he doesn't. So right there, the weight of the evidence wouldn't wouldn't support that it was a a core essential thing. In fact, fasting would actually qualify as a doubtful disputation. Mm -hmm. Because there's no other passage. In fact, most of the passages on fasting come from the prophetic program with Israel, where they humble themselves physically to get God to move. I can, well, see, because I studied out, I would say, well, Paul wrote this to the Corinthians because there were Jews there. He does that a lot. Romans, Corinthians, early books. I got all this going through my head. There were Jews there, particularly, who would fast. By the way, some Gentiles did that in the past to move their gods, little G. But now it's the God of, uh, of, of the body of Christ, of God, Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. So they would be familiar with the concept and yeah. kind of, it would be comforting to them or something to be able to do it in their new understanding. Exactly. So something like fasting would be under the, the uh, guise of doubtful disputation. It's not that Paul doesn't mention it. He does. But it's not one of the weightier issues. Well, and by the way, I believe it was because of the, it was a transitional issue, too. Mm -hmm. Because there's not one other passage. Well, he does talk about fastings himself. That means he, he, was, he went without, okay? Mm -hmm. Went without provision as far as, as suffering. But my point is, Paul is not ever putting fasting upon the body of Christ. Commanded it, right? Fasting would fall under a doubtful disputation. So, so Ryan, what I'm saying is, if a brother says, "Hey, I got to share something about Paul, something, something I saw," I would listen to him, and he would come up with this one passage from First Corinthians seven, and I would say, "Okay, I see where you're going there." My only thing I'd say this: my only thing is, of the thirteen books of our Apostle Paul, he only mentions this word I think twice, one in Second Corinthians, but it's never placed upon us. It's not in this, I wouldn't consider it a central doctrine that the mystery hinges upon. Right. If you didn't fast, would that affect the doctrine in any way? The answer is no. There's no, nothing to support that. Yeah, there's no proof from Scripture. And that's how you would have to get me. 
Fortunately, over the course of time, and I have been blessed to remember everything I read, this year, it, it, the, the moment someone says something to me, especially about Paul's epistles, the verses just, what well, they're in me, they just flood to my mind. I would automatically understand the context of that thing. I mean, we'd look at it, but I, I knew the context. I knew Paul only mentioned this twice, one in 2 Corinthians when he's talking about his suffering. He never put that. So that's the advantage I can have. I can just analyze that thing, discern that thing real fast. But I would say stuff like that. If, if the weight of the evidence from Paul doesn't point to that, for example, even though joint heir is mentioned once, I'm going to use this. Romans 8, 17. Just like the mystery. The concept is all through Paul's epistle. The concept of fasting is not everywhere you read Paul. The verses just don't line up. This concept of, 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 uh, of uh, the judgment seat of Christ, going after the glory, running the race, pressing toward the mark. Uh, running well. Running, you did run well. Uh, right, it's exactly. By the way, running well, that's not salvation. No. You, you can't even run until after you're saved. You can't serve the Lord in lost condition. Running well is a sanctification. I can't even believe, I really, that guy, that guy actually said that, didn't he? I was there. And this is like, oh man, no. That's, you come up with that stuff when you're trying to wrangle out of the thing, get off the hook. Mm -hmm. No, running well, uh, uh, he, he said, uh, no man that warth and take him to uh, please him to be a soldier. He, uh, he, uh, any man striving master, he's not crowned. He strive lawfully, right? Mm -hmm. Striving lawfully, uh, all these things approved unto God. Like this concept of, of that joint airship is all through Paul's epistles, if you're honest with the verses. It may just be mentioned once, but this is no doubtful disputation. Well, the I mean, issue we're just, it's kind of arbitrary that we're, we're even uh, giving it the name of joiner. It's just kind of convenient, but it, it, you could easily call it, call the concept anything you wanted, really. Yeah. Right? Just like we call, you know, just like the, you use different words that are not in the Bible to describe a concept. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. Well, one that we always use is the concept of the Trinity. Right, right. right or the yeah. rapture. Right. Or oh, the rapture. The catching away. It's actually called the resurrection. Uh -huh. But we use that rapture. We use that word rapture. Mm -hmm. The best one is Trinity because it's the concept of one God and three persons. And it's everywhere through Paul's epistles, right? right. You talk about God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. First, 2 Corinthians 13 ends the book with saying, the love of God. And, 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 and the, let me see how Well, the difference is, is that like the Trinity we, and, and the joint heirs of Christ, we just choose to use a Bible word to describe it. So when we say yeah. talk about Trinity, we'll talk about the Godhead, right? Yes, Because that's the Bible word. That's the, exactly. And, and even though the Godhead, the word Godhead isn't all over the place in the Bible, right? But don't say Godhead to this lady. Because the lady, because, you know, other religions use that word Godhead to call us and stuff. So. Whatever. I know, you know. <laughs> but uh, but the, yeah. my point is, is that joint heir is a Bible word and it's describing that concept and that's why we use it. Yes. And, 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 and where it's mentioned here in that passage, it's not limited to that passage, the concept. It's, it's, it's the, what I see. We could, for example, say, use the word uh, reigners or reigning members of the body yeah, of Christ right. in the heavenly realm or something if we wanted to. We'd be yeah, it's, about it's the actually same synonymous. Thing, yeah. We just choose to use the Bible word joint there. Right, right. That's why it's kind of ridiculous for the one brother to use the paper we worked on with Matt to. to Talk about reigning, but avoid that it's your joint heir. That's the same thing. That kind of halfway thing. That craziness. But yeah, um, as, as one other, yeah, the concept. So, so yeah, the weight of the evidence, like I said, Paul doesn't go into great detail about fasting, but he, but, but, but he does there. By the way, even if he didn't call it fasting, if, he, if it was all these terms where you had to, you know, uh, abstain. In fact, in fact he tells you the opposite. Right. So, yeah. A doubtful disputation would be something that it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, the, the mystery doesn't hinge on it. Yea, there won't be a lot of evidence from Paul's epistles on it. And, and, and that's how I discern things. I say, how, how important. And so for those who trust me, who've been part of the ministry and, and trust my, my grab, 
When I say that, in my opinion, this issue of joint heir, or I'm going to also say of reigning with Christ, which is contingent on the work of faith, the labor of love, and suffering, because those in context, that this is the pinnacle doctrine. Now, nobody has to believe that. I'm just saying that's what I see. And in how, my can, how can the pinnacle doctrine be a doubtful disputation? It cannot. In fact, in fact, I would say the opposite. It's something that you contend for. Right. Can I tell you what? We need to contend like Paul and them did for his gospel at the Jerusalem Council, baby. Mm. That's that's. Th By the way, all this is. I'll say it like this: it's it's the entirety of the sanctification. We talk about justification. That's Paul's gospel, right? When I say the gospel of grace, okay. I would say that reigning joint heir, when God's will is all men be saved and come to knowledge of truth, the entirety of sanctification is this issue of joint heir and reigning. Well, look what Paul our pattern did when it came to Peter, a godly man who was mm -hmm. challenging a, a, a core Pauline doctrine. He withstood him to the face. Oh, all right. see, that's why I love him, Ryan. He's, they should just take advantage of you and me, man. Check this out. Thank you. Galatians. This issue of Justification, okay? Mm -hmm. The gospel, that the, the, the gospel of the grace of God. That there's no, well, that's it. There's no difference. God fault. Okay. Paul got up into Peter's face and rebuked him in front of everybody, right? For that for that issue. Grace. The grace gospel. That there's no difference. And you know what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile. Right. With that same ferocity, this issue right here, Joint heir reigning, Paul would, I believe he would stand with that same ferocity. By the way, he would stand up against an, an apostle, right. Israel's apostle. How much more should we and Paul stand, stand up to even other brethren who are in pulpits and so forth for this truth? Because the same way Peter messed around with the, this, this issue of the, there's no, the grace of God, God's grace, that there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. We need to stand up for this secondary issue, but really they equal sanctification. This is just the next thing. Salve justification, sanctification. Peter had them believing that they needed to be circumcised, keep the law, that some, somehow being Jewish was the issue with God to be accepted. Well, here, this issue of joint heir and, and reigning, that's the next pinnacle issue outside of the gospel. They actually go hand in hand, justification, sanctification. We need to stand up for this issue of joint heir and reigning as the pinnacle doctrine it is, just like Paul stood, which stood Peter to the face. Yeah. So um, I, a couple things I, I want to say about that is uh, yeah. it's interesting to me that, <clears throat> so, that when I have talked to people about something that is an attack on a core doctrine, for example, the New Reconciliationists saying that uh, people go to hell with their sins forgiven in the dispensation of grace and... and uh, and I, I, I tell them, no, I don't agree with that, and I tell them why and stuff, and then they, you know what their first kind of thing is, like, well, it's a doubtful disputation. That was well, like no. an initial thing, right? See, Which is interesting. And then I also get it with... Uh, because the gospel of grace hinges on that. Exactly, so there's a good example, right? The but I also, get it, I also got that with the guys that are challenging the joint airship stuff, right? So they say, oh, you know, hey, you can look at it that way. I don't see it, but that's all right, right? Um, but anyway, but here's my point, and, and Matt brought this up, Ephesians 4 or 5, right? One yeah. Lord, one faith, one baptism. If, yeah. if these guys that we're talking to that say, oh, you know, it's just a doubtful disputation, why you make such a big deal out of it? If we, we came they're up They're not that way with issue of water baptism and stuff. And like they're not that. that way about one Lord, one but they Lord. are that, but they seem to be flipping about one faith, because we're uh, saying yeah. faith is different. We're talking about something different about this faith. You, you're talking a little different about this faith. So think about that. Right? It'll be just like if somebody attacked the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and or baptism. baptism. Mm -hmm. Most dispens obviously, us, we dispensationally believe that water baptism is not a part of. Yeah, Matt was bringing this up. He's like, man, if you, if you went up to these guys and started challenging the one baptism or the one Lord, they would not be, oh, you know, you see it that way, I see it this way, it's cool. But if you, you, you this, for some reason, they're slipping on this faith, right? Saying, wait a minute, this faith and the faith of Christ, this is... And they're attacking the faith of Jesus this is, Christ. This is important, you know? Well, you and I said before, watch something, whether it attacks faith, period. Whether it's the faith of Christ mm -hmm. or the faith of the believer, Right? Because I, I, was, I was talking to Chris, I'm not sure if I remember one for the New York City. It was about 
maybe maybe we already went through I had, it was it was a couple of verses. We already went over this one in First Corinthians fifteen seventeen where and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins, right? All right. Your faith is vain, and then what Paul is saying, therefore, you be in your sins, right? right? So the thing that activates the forgiveness of sins is faith. faith right. You it, Check this out. How can, if, if you could go to hell with your sins forgiven, then Paul wouldn't say, if Christ be raised, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. He connects the issue of faith with, I, with sin. I got it. Hmm. Acts 13, 39. Look at that. Look at that. That was the one. That was the one. We were talking about the Acts 13, 39. Acts 13, 39. I was talking just about this. So I was saying, Ryan's dealing with these new reconciliations. I say, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are dead yet in your sins. You are. Ye are yet in your sins. You're still in your sins, right? So there you go. Faith is a necessary component for yes. that sin issue. Right, and that word yet is important. Mm -hmm. You're still in them. Right. That faith is what gets you out of them. Right. So really, what he's saying is your, your sins are not paid for until you exercise faith because right. you're yet in them. Right. There's well, a payment for them, but they have... But well, yeah, no, they're, they're you, not you don't get that payment until and, you... Yeah, you don't get the payment. Right. You, you get it by faith. Now right. watch Acts 13, 38, 39. Yeah, we got to be all... we got to be all super <laughs> focused with what, what we say so they can't twist our words. I know, it's this really is frustrating. crazy. It is frustrating. But you know that the, the evilness of the heart, those hearts. Verse 38, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So first of all, it's through a man, the Lord Jesus preached forgiveness of sins. And now watch this. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now notice him. It's by him, all them that believe are justified. You have Paul here in Acts, and obviously written in 1 Corinthians 15, when it comes to the issue of sins forgiven, forgiveness of sins, by him all that believe, you don't get your sins forgiven unless you have faith that you believe. No one goes to hell if they've trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Therefore, you cannot go to hell with sins forgiven. Now, you don't get that forgiveness imputed to Christ is the sacrifice. He is that perpetual eternal sacrifice. But you're not going to get the payment unless you, by faith, by believing God's gospel of grace, that's the thing that activates it. it it's not that difficult. This is it. Right. By I him mean, all that believe. It's the same with that verse that the uh, Savior of all men. Especially, especially them that, that believe. believe right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it's simple. And thing. you have other verses where it says Christ came to save sinners. So what are you being saved from? Sin. Who is being right. saved? Them that believe. And then the thing is, you're yet in your sins. You're yet. You're still in your sins. Mm -hmm. So, no. So, yeah, but, okay, go ahead, go ahead, but, but just just like a, what I was saying yeah. though about the the it's interesting about that one Lord one faith one baptism right no that's a great that, point. that think how important that faith is it's just as important as not slipping on one Lord or one baptism it's that important one so and, and your point is this if the brothers who fight us on the issue of the the one well the one faith is this issue of the joint error right. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be this dismissive or this kind of nonchalant, like, hey, if, if someone came and says, well, Jesus is not the Lord. Or they wouldn't be cavalier about or, that. Or, right? hey, water baptism yeah. is a requirement. No, they'd be somebody. like, nope, this is not a doubtful disputation. But here, for some reason, it is. It's weird. Well, can I tell you why? Because it's the one thing in there that they haven't studied out and settled. Mm -hmm. Well, they haven't studied out. Mm -hmm. They settled it unbelief. See, right? Again, that gets the pride. They've already... And, and positively understood the issue of water baptism is not the baptism that is the spirit baptism, right? Mm -hmm. They've already settled, obviously, in their mind that Jesus is that one Lord. They haven't yet 
understood, they haven't even studied out this issue of what that one faith is. Mm-hmm. They, they would say it's the mystery, but they don't understand a component. The, the, the greatest component of the mystery is this issue of sharing in Christ's glory. Mm-hmm. And that's something attained through sanctified works of the grace believer. Well, it and is. it's the issue of the faith of Christ. It, it is. Right. It's the faith of the, 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 the mind of by, also called by, the mind by of faith, through faith, by faith stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they, that's a great point. Mm-hmm. They, would, they wouldn't be so nonchalant and, oh, that's what this They really knew what was going on here. Yeah.